an angel floated down with red curly hair and like a white lacy kind of dress on and I kind of thought I was dreaming it but it was real as can be to me. Satan was an angel and he turned bad but he knows he's powerful too. Sadly, I think in America, we're, we're a very violent society. We have, I think, this ingrained sense of accepting violence as a normal way of life. This was shot with a 338 Winchester Magnum nine times. Pretty good size animal, 1,200 pounds, so it's hard to stop. Seven millimeter short magnum. It's great for hunting out west. This is a 12 gauge pump shotgun made by Remington. Excellent firearm. Americans have been armed and kind of nuts for the last 200 years. It doesn't answer the question why did it start in post offices in 1986? Why did it go to the workplace in the end of the 80s, early 90s? Why did it go in, into schools? There's a huge number of suburban youth who are armed out there who at, at any point could end up pulling the trigger. Part of understanding them is just simply the availability of guns and the gun culture in the U.S. America's always had guns. It's supposedly in our Constitution, depending on how you interpret the Second Amendment. So it enables it. It helps make it easier for more shootings to take place. But. Um, Calling it the root cause is just blindness. A 14-year-old freshman with a handgun opened fire on the students gathered for prayer. Joseph Westbrecker, age 47, of Louisville, a long-time employee of Standard Reviewer. If Williams is tried as an adult, he could get 500 years in prison. Do you know of any places where he's worked that he's had a incident where he's threatened? other co-workers or supervisors. This time, it was a 27-year-old graduate student who carried his weapons in a guitar People case. saw him with a gun and saw him shooting. Himself. Police say the he shooter carried five gone. stolen weapons to school. Two rifles, two shotguns, and a I think that Paducah is a really wonderful place to grow up. I mean, it was small to me, but also big in the same way. And I also just really felt like everyone was very close. We're on first name basis with each other. And we know a little bit about each other. Most of us don't have big secrets. Spent every bit of my life within 20, 30 miles of here. Located on the river, it's uh, relatively quiet, friendly town. Books, backpacks, and blood mark the hall where the 14-year-old freshman with a handgun opened fire on the students gathered for prayer. 14-year-old Nicole Hadley, 15-year-old Casey Steger, and 17-year-old Jessica James were killed. 
the prayer group met in a circle around the lobby every morning and they offered prayer requests and then they would hold hands and they would pray. And then after they said amen, they just kind of socialized a little bit. I actually remember a lot from that morning. The very first girl gets shot in the head. And I remember standing there looking at her thinking, this is just a joke, this isn't real. This couldn't happen here. The shooter was standing right over there in front of the gun case. And I remember hearing the gunshots around me and thinking that it was firecrackers. And I'd never heard a gun in real life. I'd always heard guns on TV. And that, those don't sound like real guns at all. I heard this noise and I thought, oh great, somebody shot firecrackers off in the lobby. So I came out the door and when I did, there was a massive rush of kids coming down the hall. After three slow pops, I remember there was a huge spray of bullets after that and I was shot in the spray of bullets. So I come in here and then there's a body there and then there's one here and I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on? So I immediately, Missy was here, so I came down to her and her, her sister was there and so I talked to her and said, Missy, are you, are you okay? I couldn't feel my stomach, I couldn't feel my legs, I knew I was paralyzed. But now Jessica James, she was conscious when we first uh, got to her and she began to uh, have seizures and, and shake. And so uh, I left Missy and came over here and stayed with her. We found that a bullet hole, she had been shot right here. And I can remember thinking, oh great, she's gonna be okay. It was almost 11.30 or 12 o'clock before they stopped surgery on her. Um, she was losing a lot of blood. I don't know exactly how many units of blood, but uh, we had a friend that worked back there and he was talking about that they were holding units of blood in their hand and squeezing them, just trying to keep her blood pressure up and just one bag after another after another. Jessica believed that there was a higher calling and she had even left a note that said, my bags are packed and I'm ready to go. We never know when the Lord's gonna call us home. Our children are a gift to us. And God doesn't say he's gonna let us keep them forever. Casey Steger was back here in the hallway. The pirate was not here um, at the time. And Casey, she never gained consciousness. She was my firstborn, and since I was adopted, the first time I saw her was the first time I ever saw anybody that I was related to by blood. So she was really special. She was a very determined young lady. She decided in sixth grade that she wanted to be a police officer and never, never wavered. She talked to me one time about a freshman named Michael asking her out, and she did not want to go. The way she described it, um, I feel certain it was the shooter. I saw Michael standing against the wall with a 22 Ruger automatic in his hand. I owned the same kind of gun myself. Same brand, same style. I started towards him. There wasn't going to be anyone coming. There wasn't any police. There wasn't going to be any help coming. I knew that and I'm the principal. And I thought, you've got to get that gun before he changes clips. As I moved towards him, he just laid the gun down. I didn't say anything. There's no eye contact. It's not like it is on television. All I can see is that gun. After he was done shooting, I remember thinking, I can't believe it was Michael. And I was so confused and thinking, why did he do this? And you asked me, Carneal, spell it C A R N E A L. And your date of birth? June 1st, 1983. And that makes you 14. 14. I met him in the hallway, and he had a blanket, duct tape on the ends of it. And I asked him what it was. He told me it was a project for school. 